Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to add or adjust components to a micro mouse. We will be doing this in Onshape and we'll use a fang as the example for the video. I will show you some resources to make sure that you can source and assemble your mouse successfully on your own. If you are unfamiliar with what a micro mouse is, go check out Veritasium's recent video linked below. Go watch that and then come back for the rest of this video tutorial. As you'll see here, we've already got a preemptive design of a mouse. Uh, and now we're going to share this into the public domain so you can make a copy, you can use it as a starting point, um, or you can just use this video as kind of a guide on, on how to start doing electronic electronic and mechanical component integrations. Now, after watching the Veritasium video, I've definitely started to think about how I can improve my micro mouse and some of the things that I would like to bring to my design um, that would make more sense or potentially would make it faster. Right now, it's kind of set up to be a little bit of a long distance mouse. I put quite the large battery pack on it. So with that being said, the first thing that we're going to do is propose an engineering change and we're going to start implementing it. Uh, the way that we do this is by, first of all, creating a version of our first working revision. So if I have a working design, I might want to make a version and this is going to just give me a point in time that I can always restore back to if my ideas are just not working out. Um, furthermore, what I'm going to do in this design is I'm actually going to create a branch. Uh, and this branch is going to actually let me um, just fork on the road and, and give myself a different space where I can test out some new ideas. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is integrate a fan because uh, in that Veritasium video, I learned that they're using fans to really keep these mice really tight to the ground um, because you want to reduce the, the center of mass as much as possible so these things can go as fast as possible, right? And, and so if I had to improve this mouse, it certainly would uh, work hard to bring down that center of mass, probably remount the wheels and, and do a few other changes to it. But for today, we're actually just going to focus on, on getting rid of this battery uh, for right now. And we're also going to just institute a fang into the sign. So uh, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to suppress it. But what I would like to show you is also how that affects that center of mass, right? So before we start really just uh, working our way to you know, replacing this and, and putting up uh, or fang in there, let's let's do a little bit of analysis. And, and just keep in mind, we're doing all of this on a branch. So I can make any changes I want, and I'm still going to have my working design that I can come back to at any time uh, and just, you know, keep working on something that was working, right? So I, I'm not blowing anything up as, as I do this work. So as I select all my parts and I open up this measuring tool here at the bottom, which is covered by my face right now, but you should see is it looks like a balance. Uh, you'll pop up this panel. And this panel is actually going to show you the center of mass, as you see here in this little um, circle with the black and white stripes. Uh, and that's actually your center of mass. Now, check out what happens when we actually take out the battery. Now, that center of mass is going to shift because that battery is the heaviest thing in our design. So that, that already is telling me that this is going in the right direction if I can uh, do something to reduce the weight of it. Uh, and again, we'll see that center of mass just slowly lowering itself. So this type of tool can be really, really beneficial to analyze like, hey, is my center of mass central to the mouse? Because we probably also want to shift it to the left so that when the mouse is taking a turn, as, as we learned in the video, they, they'll get up to like G6, right? So, so the weight and the central position of, of this um, center of mass is going to be really, really important to us as we pick up speed. Um, so again, as we iterate, we're going to want to get that better. Uh, and we can use these types of tools to just understand uh, how to change our design. For today's example, we're just going to take these two pieces out and we're just going to suppress them um, and we'll institute a fan, right? So as I do electronic design, I'm usually using one of many web pages to pick out components and, and institute them into the products that I'm working with. Uh, I'm going to show you two different options today on how you can go out and spec a component and bring it into your assembly so that you can later refer to your build materials and purchase that. In today's 
class, I guess. We're going to be using Mauser Electronics as one of the examples. Uh, so Mauser is really handy, in my opinion, because they have a lot of models that you can also pull down, and they just sell a lot of electronics, uh, at least in the US, uh, no problem. So, so you can come in here and pick out some components that you might need. There's other pages like DigiKey or Polo, uh, which specializes on some of the micro mouse stuff. So you, you'll find a lot of different suppliers out there. Uh, I'm just going to use this one as an example. A lot of them are going to be somewhat similar, but you, you'll just be able to navigate them, right? The first thing I want to make you aware of is that a lot of the time when you're looking at these components, there will actually be CAD data that you can download and just throw right into Onshape so that you can actually test how that CAD data looks. So here in Mouser, you actually see the eCAD model. So this allows you to download both the 2D schematics if you're doing electronic design, uh, as well as the 3D models for these components, right? So if I actually wanted to bring that part in there, I could just select, hey, I just want this device, download the CAD model, I just want a step of it, uh, and you can throw that into CAD. So, so that's really easy to do. Um, for today, we're actually going to be specking out a fan, so I'm just going to look for, for a little fan. Uh, and Mouser is handy because it actually lets you filter really well. And that's kind of what I like about this page. Um, so I'm actually just going to go for a fan that has a width that I'm looking for. So I want something that's around 30 millimeters. Uh, and I'm going to apply that as a filter. So that's going to be the main thing that I'm worried about right now is going to be just how big is it. Um, and, and that's the, the decision making is going to come from from how big my fang is going to be. So we could choose something like this, right? 30, 30, 10 millimeters might be a bit thick. Um, so we might want to respec something that's maybe a little bit less thick, right? So let's go into seven and a half millimeters. That seems like a good size. There we go, 30 millimeters square and seven millimeters height. So I like this component. Let's say that I want to pick out this fang and this is what I'm gonna use to install um, in, my, in my mouse. So I can kind of inspect that uh, part that I'm gonna bring to my design and I can purchase it if I want to. Now, something to notice is that not every part is gonna have that 3D CAD data, um, don't be too worried about that because we can cat this really quick. So if I can't find a 3D representation for it, something that I would recommend is obviously you can go out and, and find a different part. Uh, but if you cat out a bunch of different components, uh, you could just kind of use those as needed. Um, so that, that's an option. So with that being said, I'm going to do a very quick uh, speed up of me just catting up that, that fan part. Uh, and so Enjoy this uh, just a little speed run. Boom. All right, uh, and so we've got our little fang. I hope you enjoyed that little speed run. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything super complicated, right? We we just wanna we just wanna have a representation of what this is going to look like, um, so that we can install it. Now, this is kind of where things get interesting, right? You you've got your fan. Now, what you want to do is you want to go in here and you actually want to take the the number for this component, because when you go to order this, you're going to want to order it under that number. So you can call this, well, you, you could even add the description for this fan, right? Wh whatever it is, it, it's going to, it's going to give you some good information you can refer back to later when you're designing. And if you want to replace these parts, if, if this is something you want to change in the future, now it's very easy to do so because you know who you're sourcing this through. So very quickly, you now have a part that's fully defined. And so if you ever need to make any changes to it in the future, you know where to go. All right, 
now that we've got our little set of components, we're just going to insert our fan right into our assembly. So I can just look up my fan. I can see that I have a part called fan that looks right around the size that I want it to be. So to install this into our design, what we can do is we can just say, hey, I actually want to meet this somewhere along here. Um, I'm going to use a random mate connector because what I can do now is I can actually offset this mate connector and I can drive this geometry into this spot that I want it to be. So as we've already kind of talked about, I do want it to be central. Um, and then I'm going to move it. Let's try 10 millimeters. That's in the wrong direction. So let's try negative 10 millimeters. And that's too far. So quickly, I can kind of hone in on, on where I want my fang. It's going to be right in the middle. Now, with this being said, and actually, my fang is, is backwards now. So I need to reassemble that really quick. Let's let's redo this. I, I was lazy, and I picked the, the bottom side of it. But it, flipped my fan. So let's put it in the right orientation and then just offset it again. Now that my fan is assembled, I need some holes for it, right? Because we need to bolt it down. We need to uh, install it into the design that we're working with. How do I do that? What I can do is I can say, hey, I actually need to edit my board in context. right? So edit in context is going to allow you to select the context of the assembly and bring that into um, a part studio environment. And that's going to allow you to do some edits very quickly. So as I edit in context, I can say create new context. That's going to create a context for my assembly. And quickly, you can see that I actually now have that in here. So usually, I would go into a sketch that I already have working. I like to define a lot of stuff inside of one sketch. But for clarity, I'm just going to create a new sketch so that you can really see what it, what's going on. So I've created a new sketch on the face of the board, which is the part that I'm editing right now. Just to be clear, I'm editing this board. Uh, and now I need the holes for the fan. But I also need to make a protrusion so that the fan can fit in there. Um, and, and that will eventually break that mate that I created because I'm going to get rid of one of these holes that I used to made it, but that's okay. We'll we'll, we'll fix it um, pretty quick once we get back into this and that assembly. So I'm going to use the use tool or the project tool, and that's going to make very quick work of this. Now I can go in here and I can say, hey, I actually also want to use. Ah, see the the circumference of the circle is kind of broken because we put those little uh, pieces of geometry there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of generate those, and then I'm going to create uh, a circle that just fits. The, the beautiful thing about this is that if you ever go back and edit that fan, you're going to be able to very easily um, edit that geometry. And so it's going to be really, if you update that context, it's going to be really easy to just bring all of that stuff um, forwards in time. So Onshape does a really good job with that. Let's see. This should be defined. Ah, so what's happening here is that I, we're actually imprinting the sketch, and that's going to create some issues. So I'm going to disable the imprinting. And what you see is like all that stuff goes away. Um, so if you ever have problems with like a sketch not projecting properly or not wanting to read into um, what you're doing, this is probably what's going on. Uh, let's see. Ah, solid. I was very confused. Going to make sure that you select the right type of cut. And now when we show our board, you'll see that the cut is happening properly. So I'm just going to use through all. Um, the benefit of, of giving it a lot of design intent is that when you execute a change like this, uh, and then if you update anything, it will maintain its parameterization, which is very valuable to us. So if we ever want to come back here, it's going to be really easy um, to, to kind of change that. So now all I need to do is go back to my assembly. Um, you'll notice that this is broken, right? Like it's no longer assembled properly. And that's because we got rid of the hole that we used to assemble earlier. So what I want to do is just go in here and edit uh, this broken mate connector. And now I can just set it to be the center of this geometry that we generated. And so it no longer needs the offset. And now we're right in the center. 
Awesome. Uh, the last thing I would recommend you do is, again, in that Properties tab, we're going to want to change the material. I guess, oh, we can't change material from Properties. So let's just go into our Build Materials, and we're going to go into our Fan, and we're going to select the material quickly. Um, I'm just going to call this ABS. Now, what you'll notice, and the reason why we would want material selected, is that I'm not going to be able to get a mass without a material. You know, the steel is going to weight more than plastic, so, so we can't really generate a mass unless we know the density of the material. And so I know that that's going to be around 2.7 grams. Uh, if I also wanted to learn the mass of my entire assembly with the bill of materials, I can very easily go in here and say, hey, uh, what is the top level assembly weigh? So I know my top level assembly with no batteries is around 64 grams. Um, you know, that, that's going to change depending on what components you put in there and how much stuff is stacked on your mouse. Um, but this tool allows you to understand the weight of the thing that, that's going to be running. All right, so that's most of the change that I needed. Uh, I might also want to, you know, spec out some fasteners really quick. So in standard content, you'll find fasteners. So we made a two millimeter hole, so we're going to want a two millimeter fastener um, or whatever the component that you're specking out um, is. And then we know that it's around seven millimeters tall, so we might want a 10 millimeter um, screw to go in there. Um, you might want to glue it in. It, it depends what you're doing. But you can see that very quickly I've added all of the fasteners in there. And, and this is the type of stuff where, well, this is not going to assemble properly, right? And that's the value of having the mechanical design in CAD because if I can identify that this is not going to assemble properly here because I can't fit a nut, I can make the required changes to offset this component and that's going to give me the right result. So when you're using mechanical CAD, it's going to make it a lot easier to understand what's going on and if there is any problems that are going to arise in just the assembling of components. And that's the really the, the value of a lot of what you're doing here. Um, a couple of last things as we finish off this little tutorial. Uh, with the bill materials, you know, this is going to be really, really handy when you are going to Home Depot to spec out parts or if you're ordering all your parts online, you're going to want to have, you know, all of these kind of SKUs and names. Um, but what you can also think about doing is creating a set of columns that really just encapsulate the information you need to order parts. So you'll notice that you can add and remove columns. So for this, what I care about is, you know, how many of each and then how many each is. There might be other units of measurement, right? So like if you're ordering material, like let's say um, you need metal stock, you might want to use kilograms or, or grams or whatever other unit of measurement, then I have a SKU. Um, I don't really need the name. What I do need is the vendor. So I'm going to move this to the left uh, and I'm just going to get my vendor right in there. So all of the sudden I've gotten the information that I need so I can order my, my parts. Um, the last kind of point to be made here is that if you want to make this kind of a bit quicker and easier, you can also export a CSV. Uh, and these CSVs can just be thrown into Excel, very handy to actually get that work done. Um, so it's very quick and easy to download some more information and kind of get working with uh, a CSV if you want. All right. Um, one last kind of thing on the sharing. Now that I've got my design working, I might want to confer with other engineers or other people that I might be collaborating with, make sure that this could work or, you know, see if anyone else has any other ideas. Um, so Onshape does give you the ability to share with people. It's really easy to just toss an email in here and actually share with someone. Uh, you can also generate these links where people can just go and look at the data that you've created. Um, and then lastly, you can create some comments. So if I was working uh, with Reed, I could say, hey, Reed, take a look at this new thing. What are your thoughts? So we can ask Reed to give me some thoughts. Additionally, I could 
tag the fan itself. So I can go in here and say, hey, I'm actually talking about this fan. Um, if you have a couple different fans in the design, you might want to add clarity. Uh, you can also add these pictures. So you can add even more information to the design that you're putting together. Um, so here I can, I can instead of go to PowerPoint and generate a, an image and annotate it there, I can just do it right within Onshape, which is very, very handy. Um, Sweet. So adding that picture, I can now post that comment and Reed will receive an image comment and he also will receive an email letting him know that, that I commented on him on this. And now he can open up the mouse and actually check out, hey, like what's going on? What, what are we doing with this thing? Um, so it's very simple for him to actually just pop in here. Um, oh, he actually is online right now. We can stalk him. Uh, I don't know if he'll start navigating, but this is follow mode. So as I posted that comment, he got the email and clearly jumped into this document to check out what's going on. So he's actually navigating it right now. And so I'm not touching anything. This is just read um, looking at the design. So he can come in here and actually check out what we're doing as well. Now, as we finish this design, I might just want to make another quick version, added the fan, and I might want to integrate that into my main version. So if I wanted to bring those changes back into those, uh, into the main version of the design that I'm working with, I can actually go in here, right click and say merge into current workspace. And this allows you to merge things from one branch to the other and just bring your design forwards in time. So very quickly I can say, hey, merge that in and boom, we've now replaced our battery with a fan. Super quick, super easy. All right, so I've gone through a lot of different content. I hope that this was useful to start thinking about integrating mechanical design with electronics. There is a world to be explored. Um, super highly recommend that you go to um, Veritasium's channel and check out their video. Uh, if you like this tutorial and you want more content like this, please let us know. Uh, if there is any content that you really are uh, looking for, you know, add a comment, let me know what to do next. Um, it's great to see you guys as always. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Remember to like, follow, and share. All right, see you next time.